Hey everyone, welcome to your video again. So this is my second video in the series for information regarding PhD in abroad. Last video I discussed with you about uh, different deadlines in Europe and US. So in this video, I'm going to discuss about different documents which you need when you're going to apply for PhD. So with that, I'll start. So first of all, there are some test requirements. If you want to pursue PhD in any university, they will ask you for a test. So which are these tests? First one is GRE. Uh, so GRE is not required everywhere in the world. It is required in US. If you're going to apply in ETS Zurich, then GRE is required. If you want to apply in Singapore, or you want to apply in Germany, so there are some universities which will ask you for GRE. Other than that, European universities they do not ask for GRE. So here, if you see, I write GRE slash GATE. So if you ask me uh, whether GATE score will also work instead of GRE, so I'll say in whole world there are four universities, two universities in Singapore and two universities in Germany. So they will accept GATE score also if you don't want to submit GRE score. Uh, you can submit your gates for also. So the only requirement is like they want more than 90 percentile in gate. So if you see 90 percentile is not that much. Okay. So if you have more than 90 percentile, if you basically clear that gate exam, then you can submit gates for also in NUS Singapore, NTU Singapore, uh, TU Munich in Germany, RWTH. If you want to apply in US, universities will ask you for GI score they will not accept GATE score because GATE is not valid in US. Uh, similarly, if you want to apply in ETS Zurich, only GRE score is required, not GATE score. This is a first exam which you have to give if you are planning for US. <clears throat> if you are planning for European universities, this is not required. So you don't have to write GRE exam. A uh, second exam which you need, that is basically English proficiency test, IELTS or TOEFL. So you can give either IELTS or TOEFL. You don't have to give both the exam. And uh, this is required everywhere. Either if you are applying in US, you are applying in Europe, you are applying in Australia, New Zealand, everywhere proficiency test is required. Uh, again, like there are some students I know, in they went to different university. They actually didn't give that IELTS and TOEFL exam. So you have to understand one thing. Uh, there are some universities in the world which will tell you like, okay, if your previous education is in English language, you don't have to submit IELTS and TOEFL score. Okay, so just you have to submit one document from your university, like your bachelor's and your master's is in English language. These exams are waived off. So uh, understand one thing like uh, in Europe, GRE is not required. In some universities in Europe, this proficiency test is not required. So you can actually apply in PhD without these tests. There, these universities are less, but yes, this, this is possible. You can go without IELTS, without TOEFL, without GRE exam in some universities of the world. So you have to keep trying. I'll discuss like which are, which are these universities in my following videos. Today, next thing which I'm going to discuss, what other documents you need. So this third and fourth is very, very important. SOP slash motivation letter. So SOP means statement of purpose. In US, it is called SOP. In Europe, it is called motivation letter. Uh, so there are some terms which you will regularly hear from different universities, from different persons. So that is basically SOP, motivation letter, personal statement, diversity essay, cover letter. So these are some terms. These are a little bit confusing. So every university basically, they use different terminology. For example, in US, some universities call it SOP. Some universities call it personal statement. Similarly, in Europe, some universities call it cover letter. Other universities call it cover letter as motivational letter. So uh, this is like, this varies from university to university, but you have to understand very, very clearly what are these documents, how they are different. And you have to check on university's website also what actually they mean by SOP or personal letter. So you have, they will give you always prompt. You have to read that. You have to understand the document. 
but here i will briefly explain what are these documents so sop and motivational letter what is this letter so in india like if you want to apply for phd there are different kind of test written test then there is a technical interview but you have to understand in us there is no written test if you are applying for phd as well as like in most of the universities there is no technical interview so they just ask you to write one document one or two page document that is called sop statement of purpose what you have to mention in that you have to mention about your story like how you are interested in engineering like what happened with you so that you choose engineering at very first place what particular mechanical engineering or uh, material science engineering in whatever domain you are so this you have to mention then you have to mention like okay if you did bachelor what you did which courses what extra curricular what internships you all things you have to mention in sop then third thing like if you already did your masters so what motivates you for graduate study for your masters okay what you did in your masters then next thing is like why you are interested in phd in which domain you want to do your phd under which professor you want to do phd and then what after phd this point you have to mention like you don't have to directly write that point you have to develop a story so they are interested in your story they just want to check your writing skills also so this is very very important document if you write very good sop it is always better i'll prepare one separate video for this sop cv personal statement so be with your pd if you want more information about that so coming to my next document that is academic cv so why i'm writing academic here so this cv is not like your job cv this is academic cv so academic cv is basically somewhat different from your job cv you don't have to attach your photo you don't have to write like i am very enthusiastic in this thing no just have to write uh, what course work you did what research you did your publications uh, then <clears throat> your extra curricular activity position of responsibility then your uh, information about your referees whosoever is referring you for that phd position this thing you have to include in academic cv we'll see that in a separate video what you have to mention in academic cv then next document is personal statement slash diversity essay so there are some good universities in us for example ucla so they will ask you for sop separately and then they will ask you for this diversity essay or personal statement Uh, so what is the difference in diversity essay you have to write some stories uh, you have to write like how you are bringing diversity to that university or to that particular research group which you are going to join in sop you have to write about your story like why you are interested in mechanical engineering why you want to do phd so this is somewhat different so every university will give you some points if you are applying to ucla you go you go to their website you'll check like they mention five or six points what you have to mention in diversity essay and what you have to mention in your sop so sop cv personal statement you have to uh, keep one point in mind like these documents are complementary to each other so if something you are mentioning in your cv okay and there are some information which you are not able to mention in your cv then mention that thing in your sop for example you have less score in one of the subject okay so uh, you can justify that less score in your sop you can't justify that in your cv in cv you just have to mention data so you can mention that thing in sop like why you have less score in this particular course what happened to you uh, other thing if you have some gaps uh, you are not doing anything or you are preparing some exam you can always mention that in your sop and uh, also like uh, if you are interested in somewhat different research domain which you didn't do already so your master project is different in phd you want to go in different research domain then always mention in your sop like why you want to change your research domain okay these there is some difference in this uh, documents you have to understand that then you have to write coming to my next point that is cover letter so cover letter is again different from sop generally a uh, cover letter is uh, 
<coughs> required in Europe also, uh, Europe only. In US, generally, professor don't ask for cover letter. So what you have to mention in cover letter? So cover letter is very, very technical document. In SOP, you have to write your whole story, why you're interested in mechanical engineering, what you did in bachelor's, what you did in uh, master's, why you're interested in TIG. In cover letter, uh, you have to mention very specifically, so if there is any project, why you are a best fit for that project. So you have to showcase your technical skills. You have to tell them, okay, I did this thing in master's, I know this software, I know this experimental setup, I am proficient in MATLAB, Python, this language. So this is going to require in this project, so I am a best fit for that. This is very technical. Your technical background you have to mention in cover letter. In SOP, you don't have to write everything technical. You can write story also. So this is different between SOP and cover letter. Again, I'll prepare one separate video for all these documents in which I'll show you the sample and I'll show you the points which you have to mention in this document. So yeah, coming to my next part, next document is research proposal. So again, this research proposal is not required in US. It is sometime it is required in Europe. If you are applying in Australia, New Zealand, every professor is going to ask you to write a research proposal. So what is that? In a research proposal, uh, you have to write a two page, three page document in which you are going to mention like which project you are going to do in your PhD. And you have to give split up also like in first year, I'm going to this, second year, I'm going to this, third year, I'm going to do this thing in my PhD project. First of all, the, you are interested in working with some professor for your PhD study. So you have to read his research paper. So you'll get idea like, okay, this professor is working in this particular domain. Uh, so you have to find a research problem in that particular domain. Then you can always reach that professor. You can ask him like, I'm interested in this very project. So he'll ask you to write a research proposal. You can discuss your idea with him always on Zoom call or virtual meeting, any platform you can use. Then you have to prepare this document. You have to find research gap. Then you have to define a problem. I'm going to work on this thing. Then you have to give split up also, like in first semester, I'm going to this, second semester, I'll work on this thing. This is a very, very technical document, research proposal. I'll explain that in another video, like what to mention. So, professor is not interested in all the details but he wants to know like how you are in writing and uh, whether you are aware of that particular domain or not so that's why they ask you to write a research proposal next thing three lors so what is lor it is letter of recommendation so what is letter of recommendation so for example if you worked under under me at any time of your career for example, in bachelor's, you did some project under me and I'm a professor of your university. So I have to provide letter of recommendation on behalf of you to the university. So you have to, when you are uh, filling up the application, you have to give email address of the professors from whom you want letter of recommendation. So there is one thumb rule for that. If you want a letter of recommendation from a professor, uh, make sure like you worked under him at some point either you did some course under him or you did some project under him it is not like i am actually of some department in your college you never did any project under me and you are asking me to write lor i can't write because lor means like professor has to share your work ethics with the university he has to tell like how you are in team uh, a team group uh, how you are working in a group how you are working individually he has to tell your work ethics so make sure like under the professor whom you work previously he can only submit this awards you can take this awards from your industrial supervisor tech lead if you are working somewhere so you can always take from them but if you're taking from university make sure like under that professor you either did some course or you did some sort of project under him. So three LORs are required generally and it is everywhere required if you are applying in US and Europe, everywhere it is required. So if you are planning for your PhD, uh, you can approach three professors two or three months before you actually need this LOR. So yeah, in this way, like when you are going to submit your application, you have to give their email address and uh, they have to submit LORs on behalf of you. Last thing which you require is official transcripts. 
the transcript is document in which all your marks are written from first semester to last semester so there are two kinds of university one kind of category of university will ask you for unofficial transcript so you just have to submit pdf initially once they evaluate that if they give you admission then they will ask you for this official transcript so what is official transcript so for example uh, you did bachelor's form from xy university so this university is going to provide you official transcript so they have to give you a transcript in sealed envelope you have to send that envelope to a university in which you are applying this process will take one month or uh, three weeks time i'll say so make sure if you are meeting some deadline for example your deadline is 15 december so you have to plan this thing one month before and you have to go to your university and ask them like you want uh, this official transcript or nowadays like you can email also this official transcript so you have to tell your university to email this transcript to the us university or european university through official email address so this is very very important official email address okay so this is all about different documents you need to apply in us europe basically in every university you will find this document only so here i mentioned one screenshot this is from ucla so they are telling you to submit one statement of purpose and personal statement separately as i already discussed so this personal statement is diversity statement also so this and sop is different so you have to go to their website you have to understand the difference they also give some points like what you have to mention in sop and personal statement okay so you have to understand that and you have to develop your document accordingly this is one screenshot from purdue university so here if you see like what are the requirements on the left side it is written english proficiency requirement either toefl or ielts gre requirement so nowadays what is happening like previously gre is waived off by many universities in us almost 95 percent university waived off this gre exam for two years due to covid but now ets started their home edition for toefl as well as gre the universities are now not waiving off that exam. They are telling you to give the home edition of TOEFL or GRE. So you, you have to sit at your home. If you have internet, you can give this exam. Previously, you have to go to some institute or some test center. And now you can give it at home. So they are not waiving off now. They are telling you to give home edition of this TOEFL and GRE. The other thing you can see, statement of purpose is required, recommendation letters, LOR is required transcripts are required so in mostly in all the universities you need this document so that's all for today's video uh, in the next video i'll discuss about this documents in detail so be with your pedia uh, and i'll provide you a to z information regarding phd in abroad either it is us europe australia new zealand i'll give you all the information so thank you very much for connecting with your pedia.